Welcome to our lecture online. So what is space? How can we define space? Well, many others before us have come and had some great ideas about what they thought space was and they put some calculations, some equations to it and they were able to calculate some effects that they felt were attributable, attributable to the properties of space, the qualities of space as Einstein stated it. So let's look at some ways of defining what we think space may be. And again, when we talk about space, we talk about the region between where matter exists. For example, away from all the stars, the galaxies, deep space where there's no matter available, presumably, or in such small amount of quantities that the density is so minute that it's really the properties of space that control things. In other words, that allow electromagnetic radiation to travel through it, for example. So let's see how we can define it. And I have some words of my own, for example, the letters MVB or Michel van Biesen. That's my name. And I always tell my students that space is not nothing. It's actually the opposite of nothing. It is something. But what that something is, is very difficult to define. And so one way to look at it is, I like the sentence, the fabric of space. Now, those are not my words. I've heard those before, but it really rings true to space being some property, some fabric, something that has properties that we can define and see, but we have a hard time figuring out what space itself is. So I like to think of it as being not nothing. It is something, and I like to call it the fabric of space, the properties associated with space. Now, Einstein has some very more elaborate and more, I would say, down to the point words. He said that space without ether is unthinkable. Of course, they were not able to prove that ether was there because at least it did not affect the speed of light. As Earth was traveling in one direction versus another direction, it did not seem to have an effect on how fast light was approaching Earth. We could not measure any difference. But Einstein said that's not a reason for not thinking it's not there. It just may be something different. It doesn't appear to be affecting the speed of light as we travel through it. And of course, later on when he formulated the, the principles of the special relativity, he then said that the reason why there is special relativity is because any observer will see the light, the speed of light, at the very same amount, no matter how fast the observer is traveling or no matter how fast the source of the light is traveling. So that still rings true in the concept of the consideration of ether. He said that for in such a space, and of course he's talking about a space without ether, but again, don't think of it as a fluid because we no longer think of ether as a movable fluid, but it's something that has properties, that has as Einstein stated, it has certain characteristics that we need to try to define. So he said that if that didn't exist, the ether, whatever that ether is, didn't exist, there would be no propagation of light. So he says there must absolutely be something there to space, some characteristics, some properties, otherwise light could not travel through it. He said, and there would be no existence for the standard of space and time. Because, because, for example, he already realized that gravity was caused by the presence of mass, which caused space to warp, and that causes the... Ether spells AE. AE. Yeah, thank you. I was going to ask you that. AE. Thank you. There. That's better. Thank you. <laughs> But as I was saying, so that Einstein believed that it had to have some property that affected time, that affected the ability for electromagnetic radiation to travel through space, and of course he realized that the presence of mass warped space in such a way to cause the forces of gravity that we can measure. He also realized that time is not an absolute, that time goes forward at different rates depending upon the amount of the gravitational force. In strong gravitational fields, time was slower. In less strong gravitational fields, time was faster. So he said that the properties, the qualities of space, affect the progression of time as well. So all those were strung together in the concept that there's got to be something to space. We just need to figure out what it is. Some things that we then know about space. We know that gravity is caused I need a D there, is caused by warping of space. And we also know that waves, like waves on a string, 
require a medium to propagate and to store kinetic and potential energy for those waves to propagate. Well, we think that space appears to be that, that, that substance, that medium, along which electromagnetic waves travel as well. So again, space in a way is like a string to waves on a string. Space must be the medium on which electromagnetic radiation travels. So we're going to look at some additional discoveries in the videos to come, specific things that we know about space. And then after we just know all the things that we will put together, all the things that we know about space, and from that we should be able to draw some pretty good conclusions. One question though, which I don't see much information about that, do charges, positive and negative charges, also affect space the same way that mass affects space? Now, of course, not the very same mechanism, perhaps, but we know when we place mass in space, space around it warps, causing forces of gravity, causing objects to fall together. For example, you put a, an object here, like one star, you put another star there, it warps space in such a way that the two objects feel forces attracting one another. So everything mechanically interacts with one another due to the gravity that exists between objects, but, I guess I should make this a little bit lower, but the warping of space causes objects to fall towards one another. Maybe we have a similar kind of property to space that, affect, that is affected by the presence of charges. If there's two like charges, they tend to warp space in such a way that they get repelled from one another. If they're unlike charges, maybe warp space in a way where they're attracted to one another. Of course, that differs with some of the other theories. Uh, that we've heard from other very famous physicists, so I'm not sure that this is even remotely correct, but it's something I still want to explore a little bit more as we look about, as we look at the various properties of space and the things that have been discovered over the last 100, 150 years or so about the various aspects of space itself. So we're going to get to the bottom of it. We're going to try and separate the things that we don't know from the things that we do know to try and form a picture of what space really is. It's an interesting question, it's well worth looking for. And we'll see some more videos in the future here that will try to get to the bottom of what we think space actually is. <laughs> Am I boring you? <laughs> I'm just tired. Yep. So, uh, I have some interesting ideas. I'd like to present those to you in the next videos.